Hi guys, this video that I'm making is for students who are creating a blog for my class. This session, which is the Spring 2 session, it's going to be advanced to students in my reading and listening speaking classes. So if you missed my presentation in class on how to set up a blog, or if you just don't remember what to do, then this is a video that can help you understand what you need to do. Now the first thing you'll want to do is go to Google and go to the Blogger homepage. Blogger is what we're using. You can Google Blogger, it's also blogger.com. Um, now you'll need to make sure that you're logged into Google. If you see over here, I'm signed in, there's my picture, okay? Um, everyone should have a Google account, so make sure that you log into your Google account. Then go to Blogger. Now when you go to Blogger, if you have any blogs, you'll see them here. I have a lot of blogs, as you can see. If you have never created a blog before, then this page won't really have anything on it, okay? But you will see this button here, New Blog. So let's click it. Now we can come up with a title for this blog. The title of the blog can be anything you want. It can be your name, Ashley's blog, something that simple, anything at all. You can choose the title. Now the address of the blog is a little bit different. The address of the blog has to be unique. It's like choosing an email address. You have to choose something that nobody else has. So let's see if we can come up with an address. What if I want Ashley? Ooh, this blog address is not available. I can't use Ashley. What about Ashley Green? Also not available. Okay, let me see if I can try something else. Ashley is the best teacher. This blog address is available. All right, Ashley is the best teacher is going to be my blog. Now, for your template, you have a lot of choices. You can choose whichever template you like. It doesn't matter to me which one you choose. These are all of your choices. There are a lot of options within all of them, but I recommend simple. The simple template is simple. It's easy to use. Now let's press the orange button, create blog. Okay, it says Ashley's blog was created successfully. Now I can visit my blog. If I click on Ashley's blog and I go here, this takes me to the page that only I can see that gives me information about my blog. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is go over here to pages. Under pages, you'll see that it says show pages as don't show. That means it's not going to show any extra pages that we create on our blog. We don't want that, so we're going to change it. So we're going to change Show Pages to Top Tabs. Now we're going to add a new page. When we add a new page, you have two choices. You can add a blank page, or you can send readers to another website. So we're going to add a blank page. The first blank page that we're going to add is called My Learner Dictionary. This is where you will be adding any sort of words that you learn in your reading and listening reports for my class. Then we will press Publish. As you notice, and this is important to mention, the pages should be shown as top tabs, and afterwards you need to press Save Arrangement, which I forgot to do. So make sure you press Save Arrangement. Now we're going to add another page. Again, blank page. This one we're going to call Timed Readings. You're going to put your timed reading scores here. We'll add another page, which we're going to call Writing. You'll use this page for Jamie's class. Now these are your three pages. If you go up here at any time to view blog, you can see what your blog looks like. And so if you click on it, you can see that you have all of these pages. My Learner Dictionary. There's nothing on the page, but you can access it. If you're on your blog and you want to edit one of your pages, you can click the pencil here and it allows you to edit the page. So it takes you here and you could start making changes. You can also go back here to the orange B for Blogger 
It will take you back to the list of your blogs. We're going to click on Ashley's blog, since that's the one I'm working on right now. And we'll go back here. Now the next thing that we're going to do is create a new post. Let's just call this post, Hello. In this post, make sure you have Compose clicked, not HTML. You can see a difference. HTML is much bigger. Compose is much smaller. In this post, I want you to just tell me a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm from Louisiana, and I like to eat good food and watch movies. Let me fix my typo here. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to practice is adding a link inside of your post. You'll need to know how to do this so that you can create your reading and your listening reports. So let's find a link about Louisiana. This is the main page for Louisiana. So I'm going to copy this link and then I'm going to go here. Ooh, let me get rid of this. And I want to make the word Louisiana a link. So I'm going to highlight the word Louisiana, press link, and then I'm going to paste the link I just had, louisianatravel.com. I'll press open the link in a new window. That makes it easier to navigate. And then I press OK. Now, if I press publish, and we go to view blog, and no, I don't want to share on Google+. It may ask you to do that, but you don't need to share it on Google+. I'm going to click View Blog. Here's my post. If I click the Louisiana link, it takes me to the Louisiana page. Now, I'm going to go back and edit this post. And here's what I want to do. You have an option in your post to do labels. These are the labels I want you to use for this class. The first one is reading, because this is obviously reading class, listening, speaking, and writing. We're going to put all of those labels on this post, and then we're going to press done. Then we'll press update. Again, we'll cancel. It keeps wanting me to share on Google+. View blog. Now, when we view blog, you can see the labels there. From now on, when you create reading reports for my class, you'll want to add the label reading. When you create a listening report, you'll want to add the label listening. Anything you do for Jamie's class, you'll want to add the label writing. Very simple. That way, when Jamie and I visit the website, we can easily find all of your reports. Very simple for us to find our work. That way I don't have to read your writing assignments. I can just find your reading reports or your speaking photo battles. Now, the next thing I want to show you how to do. Let's go back here to Ashley's blog. One of the options that you have, if you go over here to layout, you can add a gadget. Well, one of the gadgets that you can add is a follow by email gadget. This is a nice gadget because it allows anyone who's interested in your blog to type in their email address and then they can follow your blog. They can get email updates about it. So let's add that one. We'll just call it follow by email and we'll press save. Now, the other thing you can do if you go here to add a gadget there should be an option somewhere to have your labels shown. Yes, labels. Show all the labels of post in your blog. We're going to add the labels gadget. We'll do all labels alphabetically as a list and we'll save that. Now, let's put the follow by email first and then labels. 
We're going to press Save Arrangement, and then we're going to View the Blog. When we view the blog, if you see over here, I could type in my email address and start following your blog if I wanted to. Also, all of the labels are listed here. So if I'm trying to grade your listening report, it's really easy because I can click on listening and find everything you posted under the label listening, which obviously you would post all of your listening reports under that label. So this is pretty simple to do. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to use Photobabble. Photobabble is a very easy site to use. This is what you'll be using for your speaking assignments every week. I'm going to sign in. Obviously, if you're new, you should sign up. When you sign in, you're able to connect with Facebook. So if you have a Facebook account, you shouldn't have any problems. Now, it's not remembering me for some reason. So let's see if I can get it to remember me. OK, these are my Photobabbles. Let's click on this one. In Photobabble, it's quite simple. You simply upload a picture, and then you make a recording. Now, I'll make a recording. Let's see if I can edit this Photobabble, and I'll make a recording. I've got my picture uploaded. Now, let me press Allow. And then let me press Record. And now I'm talking about my picture. I really liked this picture. I thought it was funny because it's true our alphabet is kind of boring. Other languages have these really interesting characters in their alphabet, but we have kind of a boring alphabet. So that's why I chose this picture. All right, now I'm done recording. I press Stop. Now if I want to, I can play it. Let me press record. And now I'm talking about my picture. I really liked this picture. I... OK, great. I like the way it sounds. It's wonderful. OK, now I'm going to save it. After I save it, I have a few options. If you look over here, I could share it on Facebook if I wanted to, Twitter, lots of options. I can add, I can send someone a link to the photo babble, or I can embed the photo babble. This is what I want to do. OK, so I'm going to copy all of that, and I'm going to embed it in my blog. Let me show you how to do that. We go back here to Blogger, we go to Post, or we can just click New Post. New Post we're going to call Photo Babble Example. Now, if you see right now we're in Compose mode, we're going to switch to HTML mode only for Photobabble. You do not need to be in HTML mode for any other post, just for Photobabble. Okay, now I'm going to paste all of that. Now this looks like nothing. It looks like a lot of letters and numbers. It doesn't mean anything. But when you press publish, you'll see a completely different story. Now, let's cancel. We're not going to share on Google+. Let's go to View Blog. And my photo babble is right here. I can play it from inside my blog. So no one has to go to the photo babble page to see my photo babble. It's just right there inside my blog. Now, you'll probably need some more information from me on how to do each of the specific assignments, but this should give you a good general overview of how to set up your blog, how to choose a name for your blog, how to choose a website address for your blog, how to upload a photo babble, how to include a link in your blog, how to add pages and labels, and a follow by email gadget. If you have any other questions, please let me know.